I live in the good old U.S. of A. And if there's one thing we respect here, it's money. But one thing we all know is that someone was here before the Europeans showed up. I am the Game Collector, and this is Second Opinion Games. And today I count down my top 10 American Indians in video games. Second Opinion Games. Number 10, Nightmare Circus for the Sega Genesis. This mysterious game was most likely never even finished. Did it get released here in America? Heck no. It only came out in Brazil. And even then, I can't really find anyone that actually owns a copy of it. Everyone's just playing ROMs that have been floating around on the internet. The music here is phenomenal. And also how much moves your character can do is quite impressive cartwheels he can just drop on the floor and sort of face it a little kick and uppercut there is a lot of stuff going on in this game except for an understanding of how to play it you could enter in through a map screen to try out these different rooms and each of them seem to have their own set of rules you could kill creatures to regain souls which i believe adds health but there's no actual health bar here i really hate games without health bars but lets you take many hits because you never know when you're gonna roll over dead and croak and when you croak in this game you're actually a little bit scared. There's some crazy noises that come out of your genesis while playing this game. I wish someone would finish this title, and then I would definitely give it another shot. Number 9, Pocahontas. The only thing I know about her is that she starred in a Disney movie, and she was very well known for doing naked cartwheels. Don't worry, she gave up all that cartwheel action when she got married at the age of 13 to a guy named John Smith. But it wasn't the same John Smith that was in the movie, so Pocahontas really got around at kind of a young age. I hope this game doesn't touch on any of the subjects I just talked about, but what game you do have is a game definitely designed for women. There's not a whole lot of action here. Instead, it's focusing more on platforming and puzzle solving using animals and the spirits of animals to learn different abilities. For example, if you save a deer, now you can suddenly run. If you piss around with some otters, you might be able to swim. You know, these aren't very special abilities here, Pocahontas. I never learned how to run by saving a deer, and even though I still don't know how to swim, I'm pretty sure pissing with otters won't help. Number eight, sports. That's right, baseball, football, or any sport you could possibly imagine. If it's here in America, chances are some team is gonna use a Native American name. Of course, in football, you have the Washington Redskins, which some people took offense to. Usually white Karens, which are also the same people in the comments, saying that I'm supposed to talk about First Nations indigenous people instead of calling everyone American Indians. Don't you know how insensitive I am? Well, you know what? The high school I went to was the Muncie Indians, and that was their mascots. Here in Montoursville, where I live right now, we are the Warriors. We celebrate American Indians, and we happen to know a little bit more about them than you darn white Karens. Number seven, Assassin's Creed 3. Connor enters the mix as an American Indian that can run through trees like no one's freaking business. Now, the one drawback of the game itself is the fact that you don't play as Connor right away. Instead, you're forced to play as some British guy for like three hours before eventually you take control of the Native American that runs with trees and hunts and does a whole lot of other crap. When you finally get a hold of them, Boy, are you ready to scalp some red coats. And with that, you will be in for a treat because that's what you do the whole rest of the game. Being an American Indian, fighting for America, well, there's nothing that sounds better than that. Number six, Custard's Revenge, a beautiful love story about General Custard just trying to make sweet love to his woman that happens to be standing next to a post. Some people say that she's tied up there, but I don't think that's the case. Instead, this man is willing to dodge arrows just to make it to his lovely lady. And then you have to tap the button as fast as can to earn a really high score. Trying to get a score over 69 is really difficult because you're always gonna take an arrow to the knee or 
maybe the forehead. And if you could even change up the difficulty here by adding in cactuses, which means trying to run full force into your girl might be a little bit more difficult because you might get a cactus storm stuck in your wiener. Don't run around the desert naked is what I learned from this game. And this game was most likely my main inspiration for my own wife, who I married a Native American woman. So thanks, Custer's Revenge, bringing love to this world one step at a time. Number five, Brave, A Warrior's Tale. Think of this as one of those modern Tomb Raider games, only it's played with American Indians, usually children, instead of Laura Croft, because that's basically the entire game. You'll learn how to make fire. You'll learn how to gain the spirits and use them to your advantage. You'll even track down animals and hunt down your prey. Usually you're smashing a whole lot of stuff, trying to find whatever is hidden underneath some leaves and flowers. And it's all about making it from point A to point B in an open adventure. Sometimes giant bears will jump out and you have to run away from them as fast as you freaking can. Run away from those bears. Don't try to fight them, kid. Just run your little heart out. Brave A Warrior's Tale is a great game for the PS3 and the Xbox 360, but stay away from it on the Nintendo Wii. It was garbage for that console and quite a bit different. I even had an attachment that let me put a axe tomahawk on top of my Wiimo, but it became far too dangerous to swing around the house. I think I took off like four scalps with it. Number four, Turok. Now there was a couple of Turok Dinosaur Hunter games for the Nintendo 64, but there was so much fog you couldn't see anything. I'm playing it on the original Xbox where I could slaughter as many dinosaurs as I want. You see, that's what really happened to the dinosaurs themselves. They were all killed by the American Indians and that's why we don't have them today. If only they could have controlled themselves a little bit more, well then maybe we could enjoy them. You could also fire a bow and arrow as if it's a freaking machine gun. Had the American Indians even lose to the Europeans when they could fire arrows like this? And it's probably the best first person shooter where you can play as an American Indian. Of course, there's that game Prey out there, but I vowed never to get it because I pre-ordered it for the Nintendo 64 from Toys R Us. And then when it came out on the Xbox 360, they didn't want to honor my pre-order, which I put $5 down on that game. So instead of playing Prey, well, Play Turok, because he's better, and I didn't have to pre-order him. Number three, Sunset Riders. Well, at least the Sega Genesis version, because that has Chief Scalpum. He was a boss in the game that flips around very acrobatically and throws knives at you. This is one of the most difficult bosses because he can block your shots. On the upside, you could also shoot down the knives that he throws at you, but chances are you're going to get hit quite a few times before you can put the finishing touches on him. Also, you have to slaughter a crap ton of American Indians before you even have this epic showdown. And when you do finally beat him, you don't just get to walk over there and execute his sorry But No, his sister comes out and totally saves his behind because the hot girls in this game know what they have to do in order to save some lives. <laughs> Number two, Wampum for the NES. I don't see anyone talking about this excellent action platformer where you could just use your spear in multiple different ways. You could either hold it out in front of you and charge, or you could hold it above your head to possibly block things. You could do a downward thrust, and you could also pick up different power-ups from killing bosses, sort of like Mega Man style, only it makes a lot more sense. Spinning your spear around makes it extra deadly, and maybe even picking up a little bit of an extension to make it extra long to definitely take out all of the evil mushrooms and other things that you're gonna be fighting along the way. Wampum is one of those games that will test your reflexes and always keep you coming back for more. Playing it on a modern emulator might be the best way of doing it because it is really difficult. But once you get it all figured out, you are in for one of the best times that the original NES had and one that a lot of people forgotten about or never even knew existed. Wampum definitely deserves to be praised as one of the best American Indians ever in video games. If it wasn't for our number one spot.
Number one, fighting games. That's right, it's a bit of a catch-all because almost every fighting game has an American Indian in it. Whether it's T-Hawk or Night Wolf from the Mortal Kombat series or a ton of other games that I never even knew existed. If you're playing Tekken, you'll find one. Virtual Fighter has one. If you name it, it probably has it. Even Kasumi Ninja for the Atari Jaguar has a guy, but I didn't want to break out that system to play it at all. So you're stuck watching footage of all these other guys that I've been playing as. And if you ever play as an American Indian in a fighting game, well then you know that you're playing a real fighting game that respects American Indians and all of the culture they bring to the table. Or, you know, it's just one of those things where they just try and grab someone from every single culture and jam them into a game. I still don't know how to play as T-Hawk, by the way. I really never got into the Street Fighter 2 games, but some of these other ones are kind of cool. And some of them, you can't even tell that they're even Native American at all if it wasn't for you reading their backstories. Also, what's up with T-Hawk being from Mexico? Does that make him a Mexican Indian? Do those exist? I guess they do. One thing's for sure, American Indians in video games are definitely here to stay and are definitely a group of games that I'm always going to give a try. But of course, that's just my opinion. Thanks for watching. I got no reservation about shooting you. <laughs> nice shooting. Real nice shooting. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this list. I had a great time making it. And what American Indians did I not talk about? If it was in a fighting game, I don't want to hear it because I didn't have time to sit down and play every single fighting game out there. So let me know what lists you want me to cover in the future. And even if it doesn't sound like it's something appropriate at all whatsoever or something that I shouldn't even be talking about, well, you know what? I'll still do it because if it's crazy and weird, I'm probably going to come. So until later, I will see you again. Thank you, nice boy.